Hello everyone, my name is Amanda McKenna and I'm a singer-songwriter based in the Blue Mountains west of Sydney and together with my husband uh, I'm co-publisher of catholica.com.au uh, We've been asked to put together a short presentation on Catholica on why it started and how it started uh, but to let you know more about that, let me introduce you to the brains behind Catholica, my husband Brian Coyne. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, brains behind, I'm not sure about that, but uh, listen, we've been going for six years now, just over six years, uh, and uh, constantly growing through that time, uh, we're reaching an international audience. Now, this little video we've put together, we've actually filmed it over a number of days and it's uh, one or either of us rather than two of us sitting here talking. So uh, we'll bring you those segments. We, we were given a number of questions to cover uh, <laughs> by the uh, people who asked us to put this together and we'll try and get through those in the 15 or 20 minutes of this program. So I'll be back in a short while uh, with the uh, answers to the first question, which is really what Amanda just said of, of, of how we started this and how it came into being. Perhaps the best place to start is by giving you a quick tour of our website. At the top of our homepage are three slogans or statements that effectively sum up what we're trying to achieve. At the very top you can read a vigorous discussion on Catholic theology, faith and spirituality for adults seeking to enrich their lives. Just below the masthead, welcome to an excitingly different way of looking at faith and spirituality. As an animated part of the logo not showing on the screenshot, are also three shorter slogans that we use in various places to explain our purpose. A global conversation, a conversation about life, or a conversation we have to have. Catholica was initially set up as an outreach to the educated questioning and what in marketing terms are called the opinion leader segment of that now vast part of the Catholic baptised population that has dropped out of participation in the life of the Catholic Church. In Australia this figure is about 86% of the approximately 5.6 million Catholics in the nation. In Europe the figure is higher and in North America a little less. For some reason the participation rate in Australia appears to be about bang on the average for participation rates across the educated, affluent, socially sophisticated Western world. We are succeeding in our objective of appealing to the target audience we seek. We have experienced steady growth since we started and have a monthly unique visitor attraction of in excess of 30,000 readers. We run Catholica on the proverbial smell of an oily rag in financial terms but a critical part of our commitment is to building our readership. We have deliberately chosen to remain independent of the institution itself simply because we believe that to say what needs to be said at the moment does require us to be free of hierarchical interference and from those elements in the lay church who seem intent on trying to suppress all intelligent conversation and whom we believe are a major reason why so many have given up on Catholicism. When we started Catholica, we appreciated that the population to sustain such an endeavour in Australia is very small. There is a long history of small literary publications in this country that struggle in a hand-to-mouth existence simply because our population, compared to other places in the world, is small. From the outset then, we determined that if Catholica was to work and eventually become financially self-standing, we would need a global audience. Our global conversation objective then is more driven by a need for a large readership who might eventually sustain our endeavour more than it is by some ego satisfaction in being big. 
Around the world there is a small but growing number of endeavours that seek to report on things Catholic from an independent perspective. The Tablet in London and the National Catholic Reporter in the United States are the longest running. Today there are others such as New Catholic Times in Canada and Independent Catholic News in the UK. With Catholica we have sought to establish a similar independent source of news and commentary in Australasia and the Southern Hemisphere. There are four core parts to Catholica. On our home page each day we publish a lead commentary, seven days a week for about 11 months of the year. We are dependent at this stage on volunteers to write these commentaries and we have been gratified to continually receive more commentaries than we have space to publish. Eventually I hope we can establish a foundation to own Catholica and it will have sufficient funds to pay the normal commercial rates for this sort of publication to our writers. The quality of the writing in our lead commentaries plays a major part in attracting the sort of audience we are seeking to attract. We send out a daily email to a growing subscriber base, over 1,200 of whom receive the daily email and a further 700 the weekly edition published on Saturdays. Our main channel of attracting new readers is via search engine inquiries. These days a lot of the daily activity on Catholica is effectively unseen and comes from visitors who have found our site through search engine inquiries and are reading articles and commentaries we published a long time ago. The heart of Catholica though is our discussion forum which can be accessed from the home page but many people have found how to get to it directly and effectively use it as their home page. We have about 500 members of our discussion community and have deliberately restricted that for the simple reason that you cannot have a conversation between a thousand people or more. There are simply not enough minutes in each day for everyone to hear what everyone else is saying, let alone make their own contributions to a discussion. Of those 500, in fact the figure is up around 600 at the moment and we need to do some culling of non-active members again, around 100 are very active and a smaller cohort contributing to the discussion virtually continuously. Originally we perceived this discussion forum as providing feedback to the institutional hierarchy as to what these people who have left it might be thinking. Today we're not exactly persuaded that those who control the institution are actually interested in what those who have left or are thinking of leaving might think about anything. Nevertheless, our conversations on Catholica are a rich exploration of the big questions about life and its meaning. This is a big conversation about life. So let's now go back and summarise where we've got to so far. One, we published a daily commentary. Two, we send out over 9,200 emails each week to our subscribers, but our main channel of attracting new readers is via search engine inquiries. Three, our forum is the heart of Catholica, with a vigorous discussion on the daily commentaries and also breaking news around the world. Many visitors to our forum see it as a way of keeping abreast of breaking news because many of our regular contributors are scouring the internet to search out the latest stories that are breaking around the world. The fourth element to Catholica is our spiritual marketplace. Ultimately, it will also have a commercial objective in helping provide income to our endeavour, but in, at present that hope is still embryonic. In the long term, we do believe Catholica will be dependent on philanthropic support, and our hope remains to establish a respectable foundation that can attract the necessary philanthropic capital that can be invested and provide an income stream to our endeavour. This might be assisted by merchandise sales and advertising. Catholica is not a profit-making endeavour, but very much an endeavour that should be seen as seeking to make a contribution to public debate about religion, spirituality, ethics and other related subjects. 
Within our marketplace, though, we are seeking to build a resource centre of materials that will be of particular interest to the readership we are seeking to serve through our wider objectives. We began the Catholica endeavour really from a faith perspective. Uh, we took very seriously uh, the Second Vatican Council and accepted for ourselves and for our generation uh, the knowledge that, that we're the people of God uh, and the responsibilities that, that is entailed with that. Uh, and so both of us felt very strongly that the people needed a chance to be able to discuss together and discern together where the Spirit was leading us. Uh, in our discussions, particularly on the Catholica Forum, which is where my heart really is, uh, we have people from right across the spectrum who come and share in a uh, in an environment where they listen to and res a respectful dialogue uh, their stories. So, so whether they're victims of uh, the clerical sexual abuse scandals uh, or they are people who have been, you know, just ordinary people in their parishes, right through to uh, particularly older people uh, who have been serious Catholics their whole lives, educated Catholics, people who have become leaders in their parishes, in their dioceses, on, on uh, diocesan and national levels, in education, in healthcare, in, in all sorts of areas. And these are people who bring with them a great wisdom uh, that is worth listening to. And probably for the first time in the church's history, we have a situation where these people have a platform where they can be heard. Uh, we believe very strongly at Catholica that these are important discussions to have. And, and my favorite catchphrase being, this is the conversation we have to have. I think that was the big call of Vatican II for all of us. Uh, it's also been a case of Brian and I as a husband and wife team uh, is an important symbol as much as a reality in that uh, we believe very strongly that both men and women working together and discerning together is the way forward for the whole endeavour started off by Christ. Uh, that until such times as, as women and men have an equal voice right across the spectrum, we will always have these sorts of problems. And so Catholica is providing an opportunity of conversation where uh, people can discern together where the Spirit is leading us. Uh, and if that means hearing some things that we might not want to hear or that the hierarchy might not want to hear, well, that's what happens when you're searching for the truth of a situation. It takes you in places where you never thought you would go. And that certainly characterises Catholica today. We're in places we never thought we would go, but we maintain uh, that integrity to follow wherever the, the Spirit is leading us. Let me attempt then to answer the more difficult questions that were posed to us. In summary, they read, Where do you see yourselves in relation to the institution today? And what would you want to say to Catholic educational leaders working at the system level? When we started Catholica, I think we would have broadly classified ourselves as Vatican II Catholics, seeking to build on that vision inspired by that council so long ago, and bring its fruits to the world. Today we honestly think that hope has been killed. The institution itself is in retreat and seeking to undo the vision of the Second Vatican Council and take us back to the vision of the First Vatican Council or the vision of the Council of Trent. As Amanda said, many of the people attracted to Catholica are seniors who were inspired by Vatican II and who dedicated years of their lives to breathing life into that vision in leadership positions in their parishes and sometimes at diocesan and national level. What Amanda didn't say is that many of them themselves have raised families through to adulthood. They followed all the rules the bishops told them to follow, like taking, sending their children to Catholic schools and having an active prayer life at home and with them and being active in their parishes and schools. 
And the simple fact is they've come to the conclusion it didn't work. And they're asking today, what went wrong? Who, you, who do you blame for this ourselves? Secular society? The teachers? I don't think anybody blames the teachers. But the institution has communication problems itself. Many simply do not believe Pope Benedict and the hierarchs when they suggest it is all the fault of relativism, consumerism, indifferentism, secularism and the outside world. Our sense then is that the vision or objective of Catholica has changed significantly since we started. While I'm pessimistic about where the institution is heading, I'm very optimistic about spirituality in general. My sense is that the institution is today in a crisis as large as those at the time of the Reformation or the Great Schism of a thousand years ago. People in society in general, though, have not given up on God or have some sense that spirituality is no longer important. The internet and new media have encouraged a blossoming of conversations in the world that are not backward looking, but are seeking ways to move forward and reinterpret much in our traditional religious and theological thinking. I sense something good will arise from the ashes of this present crisis. I am even optimistic that it might all lead to some great healing of the divisions that have plagued religions and especially Christianity for centuries. Many people are overseeing their religion in some likeness to a football club. My club is bigger or better than your club or my religion is the only one that has access to ultimate truth and is the only pathway to paradise. People are far more open to listening to viewpoints of other people today. At Catholica we want to encourage this conversation and leave it to the spirit as to what the final outcome might be. Let me finally say something optimistic for yourselves as leaders in the Catholic education system in this country. The Australian Church is in a highly privileged position compared to most other national churches in the world. We have one of the best funded educational systems in the world that competes virtually on an equal footing with the public and other independent education systems. The church in this country has a larger professional workforce than it has ever had in its history and paid at professional rates, not stipends. It is a more highly educated workforce than ever before in its history and compared to most other countries. And I mean theologically educated also. You are the inheritors of an incredible legacy. From my own years working as a media officer in the Catholic education system, I have the highest respect for Catholic teachers in this country. I have written on Catholica that if you people were freed up by the institution to speak from the heart about Jesus and what you believe, the participation statistics in this country could be reversed in the relative blink of an eye. I also think the challenges you face as educators are formidable for all the reasons we've discussed in this video and what we're constantly discussing on Catholica. The challenges to your personal integrity also are formidable. At the end of everything, I continue to believe we do face some kind of final evaluation or judgment as to how we have lived our lives, both personally and professionally. The question we have to ask ourselves is whether or not we have facilitated the bringing of the good news to all people. As the trials at Nuremberg at the end of the Second World War. On Thursday the 18th of October 1945 in Berlin, the indictment was lodged with the tribunal. Thus spoke Lord Justice Lawrence on day one of the ten-month drama now ended at Nuremberg. Or well, the Watergate scandal in the 1970s. The resignations of other top White House aides and the disclosure that all conversations had been recorded on tape led in August 1974 to President Richard Nixon's resignation. Therefore, I shall resign the presidency effective at noon tomorrow. 
and the more recent trial of Monsignor William Lynn in Philadelphia have demonstrated. When we stand before the judgment of humankind or before God, we can no longer say we were only following orders. To grow as human beings, we have to follow the dictates of our conscience, the voice of God within each of us. Primacy of conscience has been one of the massively important insights of Catholicism. It has been misinterpreted today by some that we have to follow the conscience of the Church. That's not what this teaching is all about. It is about following the voice of God, not the voice of the institution, in the myriad moral choices all of us have to make in our lives. Learning how to discern the voice of God or the voice of conscience is a lifetime learning endeavour. Conscience is not our feelings, nor what society thinks either. The task we face as parents and educators is how to teach people to discern the voice of their conscience and discern it in distinction to their feelings, popular fashion, peer group pressure, or even what the institution might be wanting to say to bolster its position and authority in the world. <laughs> I really need a, a book to explain that, but that will have to suffice for the moment. As I see it, your challenge as educators is how to teach the young people of the future to discern what their conscience is saying to them in the myriad challenges they have to make in their journey through life. That is the challenge we all face if we are to take our religious faith seriously. Well, there you have it. That's the ins and outs of Catholica, and we hope you've enjoyed this overview and now have a better understanding of what Catholica is all about and why we started it and why we continue and the challenges that we believe face you and all of us into the future. So thank you very much for watching.